Welcome back to the show, where as the day turns to night, we delve into all manners of topics strange and unknown. This is 99.9 FM, Unidentified Signal. And mm. that when when day turns to night, that's that's not like just a tag. We actually come into the studio when day turns to night. It's a little chilly today. It you is know. a little chilly today. Yeah, a little, I was a little chilly that. today. It, having like I, I need like my uh, late afternoon, early night cup of coffee. You know, because it's just this is a little little chilly, a little chilly this yeah, morning see. coming into the studio. Yeah, see, I'm starting to regret the iced coffee that I yeah put together iced coffee for was not a good idea today. Nope. No, not definitely, by a long shot. Definitely want that hot cup of coffee today. But sometimes you just get into that routine where it's like, I have iced coffee, must make iced coffee. And it's like, whoops, it's freezing today. So. Yeah, it's, yeah. Strap a blanket, folks. It's the yeah. chilly one. It's it's hoodie weather. I love it. <sighs> so I'm going to, I'm excited about this one, DK. Okay. I, I wrote okay. a little story for you. Ooh, okay. A little story for you. For you and all of our listeners out there on 99.9 FM, keep your dials tuned. It's a cute little story. It's fun. It's one that I grew up with, actually. Um, have you ever heard, I'm sure you have, of the Chupacabra? I have heard of the Chupacabra. Now, I don't know the full story behind the Chupacabra, but I, of course, have, you know heard of it you know i i've i've heard of it in passing of la chupacabra la chupacabra la dude chupacabra. this thing is like <clears throat> so for the listeners out there that don't know i'm i'm puerto rican um raised on the east coast now i find myself in augury point but my family used to terrify me with stories <laughs> of, the chupacabra. of this thing oh dude don't go out at night Bring the dogs in. If you have cats, make sure they're not outside. All these things. Just don't go out late. A lot of things to keep you tucked, safe, Ah, behind closed doors. So kind of, so kind of like the boogeyman, where it's like there's no boogeyman. It's more, it's more just this story to like scare you and be like, oh, better be in bed by nine p.m. Better make sure all the chores are done by nine p.m. Or the scary thing is gonna get you. Kinda, yeah, kinda, kinda. And you know what? I hate to say it, but it it, it worked. Oh yeah, <laughs> it, 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 it works worked. on all kids. The boogeyman worked on me, you know. So yeah, I, I get it. Yeah, it's, and it, it's oh, man. So anyway, our story begins in the mid nineteen nineties in Puerto Rico, picturesque island where the legend of the chupacabra itself was born. In the mid nineteen nineties, really? That mid nineteen nineties? Yeah, it's not that old of a story. Whoa! I thought the chupacabra was like hella old. I thought that was like eight eight eighteen hundreds or something that the chupacabra <laughs> started. <laughs> well, so from all of the research I've done on this and the way my like I said my family talked about it and whatnot, because uh, I'm a I'm a product of the nineties. Same. The way my family talked about this thing, it, it extends beyond these stories because I've, I've got stories but it was more like folklore like akin to something like bigfoot you know or, or like the boogeyman or the loch ness monster like you hear about these stories for so long but in 95 residents of the town of canavanas reported over a hundred farm animals and pets just mysteriously killed and the alleged culprit a creature they named chupacabra okay Okay. Does, Spanish for goat sucker. Go ahead. Oh, I was literally about to ask, hey, what does chupacabra mean? It, goat yeah, sucker, bas- apparently. Bastardization. Spanish for goat sucker. Oh, okay. Because it, it eats goats, I assume. <laughs> Sucks their blood or something. Mostly. Yeah, mostly for its more vampiric tendencies, right? The habit oh. of draining the blood of livestock. Okay, I did not know that. I just, I just thought it was something, just a, just a scary monster cool yeah so what did the creature look like descriptions varied wildly right as they always do with as they always do but one of the first eyewitnesses the one madeline tolentino depicted it as an almost reptilian being with leathery skin sharp spines and large almond shaped eyes oh wow i did not realize it was reptilian i kind of almost thought it was like pseudo wolf ish 
and we'll get into that, but there's a lot of different, um, like, I from eyewitness accounts, stories, mixing fact, fiction, and folklore mm-hmm. about what they think this thing is and, like, what they saw when they saw it, right? Yeah. So the description captured the public's imagination and set the stage for this now legend, right, that would go way beyond the borders of Puerto Rico. Sure. Yeah, it would be worldwide. And obviously the depictions are going to be different because you've got people who probably actually thought they saw Chupacabra, and then you've got people that are over-exaggerating. They didn't see it, but they want to maybe try to um, pounce on the popularity, get a quick 15 minutes of fame, make something up. And so I imagine the, de- the, the descriptions of this thing are just all over the place. Yeah. And they absolutely are. In fact, shy just tacked to the board, two pictures that Ooh. are wildly different, right? Wow. You're looking hey, at, there's you're the looking pseudo at wolf thing that I was thinking that's more what I thought the Chupacabra <laughs> was. Exactly. It's, they're wildly different, but like unanimously accepted as like okay it could have looked like you know picture 1 but it could very also look like picture 2 so mm-hmm. no one really had anything concrete and of course it's it's like a myth everything is going by a wild game of telephone these days oh yeah for sure so the chupacabra itself didn't stay confined in puerto rico for long reports of similar creatures and attacks started popping up all over latin america and then more so into the united states especially in the Southwest. So as the legend traveled, the description of the creature began to change. In the U.S., for example, it was described more like a hairless dog or a coyote, Mm -hmm. whereas in Puerto Rico and Latin American culture, it was described as more reptilian. So more like picture one, where in the U.S. we're like picture two. So they, they could, like... It could just be a case of, in America, people were just like, oh, something ate the goats. Must have been Chupacabra. Kind of looked like a wolf, but not really a wolf. And it's it, it, it had probably nothing to do with the Chupacabra at all. <laughs> it, very well. Very well could have been that, yeah. Okay. My so goats are disappearing. Here's the legend dying. that got to you. Like, oh, my God. I don't know what it is. Something took them. Sir, they've got no blood. What happened? It's got to be the Chupacabra. It's got to be the Chupacabra. It's got to be Cain. Oh, sorry. Wrong right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So in 2007, I'm glad you a got rancher. That, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So in 2007, a rancher claimed to have killed a Chupacabra. But upon examination, the creature was later identified as just the coyote with mange. Now, mange, for those who don't know, it leads to hair loss, and it can make an ordinary animal, right, like a coyote, appear almost alien, and folks started to believe, well, that could explain some of the sightings, but what about the rest of them? Is That's it possible? That's a lot of mange, though. Like, I mean, if, it, if it's like, oh, it was just a coyote with mange, like, the, I would imagine there's too many sightings, way too many sightings to be like, oh, yeah, it's just mange. It's just yeah. a coyote. Like, that's too many. Also, wow, Shy, is that a... Oh, 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 God! Like, right? she, she just put up those pictures on the board of these coyotes with mange. I would... Uh, okay, I would shit. <laughs> all over <laughs> uncontrollable loss of my bowels because look at that that's in, that is yeah i i too would imagine oh my god that must be a cryptid that must be something from legend holy shit i just saw the chupacabra that's scary as hell i don't like that at all take that off the board right now i am <laughs> not sleeping tonight yeah it's it's wild too and you can start to see kind of like how like Especially that last image. All of them, actually. But yeah, especially that last one. Especially that last one. Especially that last one. Posted on the board. Oh, no. You get, you get a canine with mange. You're like, oh, yeah, I, could, I get it. It, oh. it looks so alien <laughs> and yeah, rabid. You, all like, like, oh. yeah. you might think it was actually an alien. You might, 100%. And it's so much so that... The legend of the Chupacabra itself has appeared in, like, books, movies, uh, video games, and television shows and whatnot, mm-hmm. that it, it, just, it just lays more credence to it, right? So I've got some 
base notable reportings for you. So the original sightings in 95, farmers started discovering their livestock dead with um, unexplained injuries, typically described as puncture wounds, right? And what made these puncture wounds interesting is they were like three puncture marks in all of the dead creatures, but they were almost like triangle shaped. Right. So these animals were found dead with three puncture marks like around their neck or major vein or artery Mm -hmm. and then reportedly just drained of blood oh and and the other thing to note is so i've done a couple episodes on cryptids right with uh, detective ridiculous and one of the things is people are always like oh well you know these these farmers are just they're just stupid they just can't tell that it's you know a wolf or they don't know what a wolf looks like or something or whatever and it's like no these are these are farmers like they know what wolves look like they probably know what a mange coyote looks like, and they probably know what it looks like when an animal has ripped uh, a, a goat or a sheep or something to shreds because it's something they constantly have to deal with because it's their livelihood. So chances are, if the farmer doesn't know what the f- attack this thing and has never seen wounds like this, then it's not just like, oh, it's just a hungry wolf. Right. Yeah. No, and I fully, fully agree with you. In fact, the legend of the Chupacabra itself mixes with some other cryptids you might be familiar with. Mm. Um, So much so that, like, there have been speculations down the line that, oh, what if they're connected? You know, what if they're of the same species for or what it's worth? But, like... These farmers would find their animals completely exsanguinated and scientists would like animal attack specialists and whatnot would be like, oh, there's just animals like drinking the blood. Now, I don't know about anybody else. I grew up on Animal Planet. I don't think (laughs) I've ever seen an episode where like raccoons, coyotes, uh, wolves or any other like rodent slash canine attack is actively exsanguinating their you know their prey that is by the way can i just say great choice of words exsanguinated oh Isn't that good man word? i love it dude <laughs> i love that i i was unaware that you could use sanguine in that manner to describe something that has been exsanguinated but Bloodless. henceforth mm. henceforth i will a million percent add that to my lexicon Oh, it's a good word. <laughs> it is a great word. Oh, shy. I don't know if you if you could post that meme that that Kiriov had where it's like, oh, no, why am I always forgetting things? Because I have to toss out words in my lexicon to make room for new ones. Uh, that's that's what I'm experiencing now where, you know, the brain tosses out the word saute like, oh, I need to forget that. And then it puts the word bussy into its vocabulary. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> I love that. I, I saw that this morning. I was like, "Brother, that is so funny because it's so that's so 2024 coded." <laughs> it really is. Oh, that's man. funny though. That's great. <laughs> Bussy, put yeah, that in the hell yeah, brother. <laughs> hell yeah, 20, 2024 <laughs> pill, dude. Oh man! All right. <laughs> <laughs> we try to back, bring back this to the train Chupacabra. back to the rails yeah, here. Yeah, 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 yeah. So over the course of several months following the first sighting, over 150 farm animals and pets in Canavanas were reportedly killed in a similar manner. And the mayor, uh, Juan Jose Camo Soto, led several hunts for the Chupacabra, but without success. And these events further fueled, like, more media coverage and public interest, both locally and internationally. And then, of course, later, more sightings started to appear, or more sightings were reported in other parts of Latin America, uh, and they began to emerge in, like, Mexico, Chile, and Brazil, but each region had its own version of the creature, with descriptions varying from, like, the reptilian to dog-like but all were connected by the same common thread of bloodless livestock. Hmm. 
Yeah, I don't I don't know what could possibly be doing this cuz like it's 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 not like it's a hungry animal that's just ripping them apart limb from limb for food. Like it is actively like draining their blood, like almost pseudo vampiric and it's like what yeah. what animal <clears throat> does that or even has a tendency to just want to drink blood? Plot or- twist, it's the Cullens and they're just attacking animals cuz this is Twilight. Oh, of course, of course. It is actually <laughs> vampires. They are sparkling their way into, you know. And yeah, that's a good point, Shai. Thank you for the well, note yeah, on that. Yeah, I was going to say, bats. vampire bats, f- f- sure, but like vampire bats aren't big enough to like actively drain all of the blood out of a goat or something, are they? No, not by a long shot. No, vampire bats, If and I could be wrong here. I, I don't remember too much of... And it couldn't be a swarm of them because then you'd have like m- hundreds of bite marks on the thing rather than just what, True. three. So, so like, I, it, yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't even know what sort of creature would have that sort of tendency for just exsanguinating an animal. Yeah, you're talking you're talking about creatures like mosquitoes and ticks and vampire bats, right? Like not huge creatures but they feed on blood specifically now if i remember right it has something to do with like the proteins or like the composition of the blood itself right i mean that um, sounds right to me i i couldn't tell you I, yeah i have no, no idea, idea. <laughs> it sounds I'm right that's sounds... reaching deep into like these archives i have in my brain here about it sounds random reasonable facts to me i i am i am i am not a smart man but it sounds reasonable to me So, by the late 1990s and early 2000s, Chupacabra reports had spread to the U.S., particularly close to the Mexico border like Texas and New Mexico. And in these areas, the Chupacabra was often described more like a strange, hairless dog rather than the reptilian creature that, you know, reports were popping up in other parts of the world in Latin America, especially in Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. In in America, is it still reports of animals that have been drained of blood it's still very apparently yeah nature. okay it's a hundred like i'm and it was hard to find uh quote unquote notable reportings but the earliest or the latest one or the earliest one i could find comes from like 2007 but there have been hundreds if not thousands of reports of just bloodless animals being found in various parts of, like, the southern United States. Wow. So the Texas Chupacabra, um, one of the most widely publicized incidences in the United States, Mm -hmm. uh, a rancher killed an animal that was attacking his livestock and labeled it a Chupacabra, and the creature was hairless with a pronounced snout and large ears, right? Characteristics that matched some descriptions of the Chupacabra. However, it was later debunked and identified that it was just a coyote with severe mange. Okay, okay. That coyote's still looking at me, by the way. I, God, can we take that off the board, Shai? Can you just rip that off, please? It's oh borderline skinwalker territory. <laughs> it really is. That thing is going to haunt me for a while, so thank you for that, Shai. Um, when, when, when he killed the thing that was attacking his animal, though, was it, it... It was, like, straight up attacking it and being, like, feral, though, right? So it couldn't have been a chupacabra if he was like fighting it to my understanding yeah and that's what everybody who like caught wind of this sided with because the chupacabra is well at least in folklore known for being extremely stealthy very nocturnal Mm -hmm. and if you're catching this thing it's always on like a refrigerator camera with really piss poor quality in the middle of the night and yeah, all like you catch is the lens flare of the of the eyes of the thing. Mm-hmm. But this guy reportedly killed one. Yeah, probably <clears> not. <laughs> so probably not, right? Probably not. Which leads us to the, the healthy dose of, of skepticism. So scientists and skeptics have offered several explanations for the phenomenon. And the most prevalent theory is that the sightings are just like misidentifications of sick or injured animals as we said before usually dogs or coyotes with mange okay okay well that 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 explains like 
misidentifying it, but how, how we have they come up with a reason to explain the bloodletting? And to answer that question as easy as possible, no. Yeah, that's no. a tough one. That's a tough one to put on anything because I just I cannot think of any predator that does that. Or, or, well, a predator large enough to do that to goats and, and sheep and, and cattle and stuff. There's just not... Again, do I know every categorization of mammal on the planet? <laughs> no. I've just, I've just never heard of, of, of an animal doing that. That's, that's the weirdest part, is that it's just three marks, blood's all gone, foomp. That's it. And it's like, what does that? I love it. I, I love I love your energy on that because that's exactly what everybody who kind of like falls in line with the with the theories and and the folklore or like attached to the culture behind it. Because science has indeed explained every other aspect of it, right? Mm-hmm. To say that it's like, oh, we, well, the legend is a sort of a mass hysteria fueled by the media and the human propensity to find patterns and monsters in the unknown, but. The method of killing, right? Draining all of the blood without eating any of the flesh, yeah, doesn't align with any behavior. Anything, yeah. The literally the only thing I can think of it is is like it started off as maybe a hoax that some dude was like, oh, you know what? I'm gonna pretend like there is a vampire monster on the loose. I am gonna put three holes in this goat and I'm gonna drain its blood into like, I don't know, a bucket or something. And then I'm just gonna leave it there and I'm gonna see what happens. And it sort of just spiraled out of control and like it's it's essentially this big hoax that's being perpetuated by people that want people to believe there's a chupa cop. That's all I can come up with, and that is that makes <laughs> no sense. It really doesn't. It really doesn't. And despite all of that, like the cultural impact of it, right? Despite all of the uh, the skepticism, mm-hmm. the chupacabra has is it's it's solidified in pop culture. It's been the subject of movies, books, and television shows, and it mm-hmm. it's kind of like since the mid nineties become like a like a cryptid celebrity almost alongside oh, sure. like Bigfoot and Loch Ness. Mm-hmm. And, and the Mothman. The Mothman. <laughs> the, the Mothman statue is a great ass, though. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever seen it. But <laughs> no. <laughs> Mothman statue is a great ass. He's built like a... Oof, man, he's, he's, he's got a dumpy, that Mothman. So I regret yeah. this. I hold up my work <laughs> laptop here to just... He's got me looking at disrespectfully of course at a oh, statue yeah yeah i am not looking <laughs> respectfully i am looking violently and drooling right so um no did somebody really okay so <laughs> no. so so shy just just uh told us that apparently somebody on the mothman's ass statue has engraved a tramp stamp and y- y'all y'all need jesus all right love that Y- y'all, y'all, that. y'all need Jesus. I, we need, actually, we need hey, somebody. Wow, that's you know, after posting that picture, like somebody really took their time on that, huh? I dig it. Yeah. See, but see, Mothman, that Mothman statues, he's he works out. He needed it. Yeah. You know what? For sure. Some people accessorize with watches, necklaces, bracelets. Now he gets a tramp stamp and it Hell works yeah, brother i respect it i respect <laughs> it. I, I respect the grind you know all right back oh, to chupacabra since we've gone a little chupacabra. off the rail yeah so like i said it's it popped up in books movies television and video games and like some of the more popular instances where the chupacabra was mentioned might be something familiar with our audience of listeners out there and and for the beyond it was in red dead redemption as oh. mission and they includes a mission where the player hunts down a chupacabra among other myth- mythical creatures and it appeared in supernatural it appeared in the x-files there's like three different horror movies out there just like covering it mm-hmm. um chupacabra territory from 2016 indigenous from 2014 and it just like lays credence to 
to that because these are 2016 and then oh, some yeah. like this mm-hmm. is this is recent we're like we're talking within 10 years that yeah. people are still actively talking about this while when others are out in, there looking for mid-90s. bigfoot and it yeah. started in the mid 90s oh, now that is such a cool rendition of the chupacabra oh my god oh i love that i don't know who- oh that's the that's the uh that's the red dead redemption yeah exactly oh that's so sick <laughs> isn't it cool as hell that's so, so cool it, and you can see that it's like they 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 took the the manged canine approach mm-hmm but they made sure to put the spines and the serpent tongue and, and the fangs on and it. The snout a little bit, yeah. So it's like it's almost like it's almost like a a modern chimera almost, right? Cuz it's got like this vampire bat head on a deranged canine body yeah. with reptilian spines and that and almost the, a pig nose on it, yeah, yeah, so, dude. And it's it's weird. It's 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 a chimera of sorts, of sorts, and, yeah. And it's it's neat. It, it's really cool how how deep it's. But like my my family, like I said, like growing up with heavily like culturally rooted grandparents and and their parents and my mm-hmm. parents. We were warned of things like that specifically, not the reptilian version per se, but the one that would hunt me down on all fours. It's like, don't go out at night, but don't do because that thing will come get you. I'm like, oh, okay, I'm, I'm good. Yeah, I'm like, how old here? Single digits, yes. still sucking on my thumb or some shit. And now I've got to worry about this thing about cool. a mange Thanks. coyote that's going to come and drink your blood and leave you lifeless in the field. <laughs> In the field. Yeah, I, yeah. For you to find me later and talk about it with the news, like that's yeah. This is why I'm I go at. to therapy. Thanks, <laughs> Grandma. <laughs> so, so yeah, it's it's one of those things. And like I said before, um, I like vaguely touched on it, but you've got things like the Jersey Devil, right, on mm-hmm. the East Coast, and one of the like real tinfoil hat theories are that a lot of these almost reptilian slash canine cryptids that have appeared in all parts of the United States and some out West and East are all part of this same umbrella of cryptids. Ah, okay. Right. So like the Jersey devil, while it has no direct relation to the Chupacabra has been, quote unquote reported on in similar <laughs> fashions yeah an aftermath to the chupacabra could be because oh the, we did an episode on the jersey devil and that is just one massive hoax <laughs> it's literally <laughs> a giant hoax there is no credence there's never actually been a jersey it is a big old hoax um but i could see how chupacabra becoming like the sort of new monster could make people be like, whoa, Chupacabra, well, that's kind of like the Jersey Devil, and then it just sort of all falls under the same umbrella, like you said. Yeah, and the the crazy thing about it is, like, the the Jersey Devil has more, um, like, myth behind it, because, like, one one of the... You can correct me if I'm wrong, you said you did an episode on it. It's, like, the cursed 13 child of Mother Leeds or some yes! nonsense. Like, like yes. <laughs> She gave birth to a devil. She gave birth to a, a baby. Uh, she'd given birth to, like, 12 kids, and her 13th, she was like, I'm so sick of babies. God, kill this baby or something. This is going to be the death of me. And then she literally gives birth to the baby. It sprouts wings and horns and hoofs, and it flies away. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it so flies like, out the chimney. So, so, and you could, I, I mean, I get it, right? Cause yeah. it's what because it's another one of those horror stories you tell your kids not to go out at night. Like mm-hmm. Pine Barrens, New Jersey, is not the same ever <laughs> since, something, yeah. since something like this. And then it's yeah. like certain parts of Puerto Rico and like Latin American countries are also the same way. Like they still tell stories about these things that will come and get you in the middle of the night and mm-hmm. boogeyman it's Boogie boogeyman people. exactly and then like I, I remember seeing i don't know like obviously like superimposed images or really bad trail camera footage of 
what they thought was a chupacabra or what they thought was a Jersey devil, or as Shai just pegged on the board there, all of the different monsters that exist Mm -hmm. in America. Right. And like how some of these relate to each other. Cause like, there's even like the swamp man or whatever, or the lizard man that has been like connected to all of this as well. It's like, cause one of the major commonalities between all of these cryptids, specifically like these four legged cryptids that just attack on, unannounced are like they're reptilian to a degree like all of them there's like lizard people or four-legged komodo dragons with fucking vampire snouts like they just yeah yeah and and it's one of those things it's like okay you could put that tinfoil hat on and uh (laughs) and and you know breathe that air if you really wanted to also looking at this monsters of america uh poster can we just appreciate Two of the dumbest names I've ever heard. The Wampus Cat and the Pope Lick Monster. Brother. Or the Puck Wudgie. What is going on? (laughs) How am I supposed to take you seriously when you've got the Wampus Cat, the Pope Lick Monster, and the Puck Wudgie? I'm sorry. I can't take your myth seriously. Give it a cool name at least. You know, like the, the 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 feral berserker cat or something, or you know, the puck wedgie. Yeah, and the pope licker. What is Doesn't this monster that, that goes and lick the pope? Like, is it a you devil mean to that tell me? Pope? Like, what the that Nobby doesn't strike fear in your heart, dude? Oh man, <laughs> not really, but you know, wild, bro. Yeah. But like, but like, I, I I saw this image too, and I started laughing because like they have Nessie in the Loch Ness, right? We have Champ. Mm-hmm. Chessy, Cassie, Caddy, Bessie, like all for what it's worth, almost Leo Pluridons that are just like existing <laughs> mm-hmm. in, in these huge bodies of water. Like, no, we've never seen it. It doesn't exist. It's not real. <laughs> yeah, Bessie is, is Nessie, but 2024 coded. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Lake Erie. Yeah, I had, I had to throw that word out of my mind so I could make room for Bessie shot. Yeah. You're right. Fair enough. Fair enough. That just makes me curious to all the listeners out there. Who's your favorite crypto zoological creature? Oh, yeah. What's your favorite cryptid? I who's wish your it, favorite? I, I, I think my favorite cryptid has to be uh, the Jersey Devil, just because the New Jersey Devils are my favorite hockey team right now. OK, you know, that's fair. We'll we'll, we'll go with that. Yeah, I. I mean, for me, it was. I grew up with the chupacabra. I wouldn't say it's my favorite, but I grew up with it, so it's definitely the one that I, you know, relate to. Yeah, it's the one that you gravitate towards because you know it scared the pants off of you as a kid, dude. So much. It's okay. Gremlins uh, used to be. I, I I wouldn't watch the movie Gremlins or Gremlins Two. Until I was like in my 20s because I watched it as a kid. I don't remember being it being that scary, but I remember. Yeah, with Gizmo. But Uh, (laughs) the reason I wouldn't watch it again is because I had a dream that night that like I was watching like, you know how like the in horror movies that was silhouette on a wall, like the shadow of like a monster eating someone. I had a dream that I was watching all of the gremlins eat my mom. Oh Jesus! Okay, and I and I was watching like the shadow on the wall of all these gremlins like crawling up my mom and just eating her. And I woke up in like a cold sweat, and I was like, "I'm never watching Gremlins again, ever." And then I'm like 22 or something, and I watched again. I'm like, "This is a comedy. What was I so scared of?" <laughs> What's That's the valid. deal? But yeah, as a kid, these things they affect you, and you know, it, it is what it is. It definitely, it definitely adds to like. The mass hysteria. What is that? Mongolian death worm. What is Yo! that? That might have to be a show in the future. Because, wow, that's a... What? Indeed, what is that? Large intestine? Okay. Okay, 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 okay. okay. <laughs> uh, we got to earmark that. We, we got to earmark hmm. that. Because that is that is <laughs> wild. Chad Mongolian cryptid. <laughs> <laughs> That's it's crazy. Too- wow. Oh, actually, that would be cool to explore cryptids from other parts of the world. Let's definitely, let's oh, definitely yeah. revisit that. Oh, yeah, earmark that. Earmark that on the board, because, wow. 
That's that's wild, dude. I, I don't like that. <laughs> that artist's rendition is crazy. That looks like it's straight out of Dune. It's a face sucker. Oh god. All right. Ugh. Okay. Chupacabra. So, <laughs> what is the chupacabra? <laughs> is it a misunderstood animal, or just a case of mass hysteria, or is it actually something that's just truly unknown? All of the above. So the, <clears throat> all of the above, and the answer, just like that, remains elusive. What's clear, though is that the chupacabra's real power lies in its mystery and in the stories we weave around the unknown shadows that linger just beyond the edge of our understanding. You like that? Dude, I put a lot of time into that one. That was pretty good. That was pretty good. I was like, hey, now. (laughs) I was like, sheesh, is this the transition? Because, wow, nice, brother. That was good, right? That was like, good. I'm yes. proud of that one. Yeah, hell yeah, dude. Sheesh. 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 All right. Any any notes that we want to share with our listeners or what are your thoughts? I want to hear some stuff. Oh, before we go, uh, again, since we're just a little show out here in Augury Point, New Mexico. If you have been enjoying listening to us on your radio devices, uh, and maybe you want to support this little show out of Augury Point, patreon.com slash unidentified signal, and, you know, consider supporting our quaint little show. You know. And that's, yeah, well, yeah, we do, we do need a better studio. Yeah. It's a cozy little studio, though, you know? A heater wouldn't kill you, though, Shy. Like, it's cold, man. I'm gonna get you a Mongolian death worm for your feet. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> that's that's one way to make sure I never come back into the studio. Ah! Enough with the mange coyotes! Why? Why? It is, it, is, it is pitch black outside! Why would you do that? What the... Dude, you won't hear it coming if that's any solace. Oh, great. Thanks. I'll just be a bloodless corpse outside the studio. Dreams do come true. God, that is horrifying. <laughs> and that's the show, folks. Thank you for joining us on this journey into the enig- enigmatic world of the Chupacabra. If you liked what you heard, don't forget to set that station preset for more Tales from the Eerie. I was slap. That was DK. And remember, the world is full of mystery waiting just beyond the veil of the unknown. Until next time, sleep where they can't find you. Mm-hmm.